Dear students, in this video, we will discuss about chemical bonding and what are the different types of chemical bonds. If you want to join two pieces of paper, you can do so by applying some glue between the papers. Similarly, if you want to join two pieces of cloth, you can just stitch it together. But have you ever thought, how do atoms join together? We cannot apply any glue or you cannot stitch two atoms together, right? But definitely, there must be some attractive force that holds the atoms or ions together to form molecules. In chemistry, we call this attractive force as chemical bond. So the term chemical bond refers to the attractive force that holds the constituent atoms or ions together to form stable molecules. The formation of chemical bond is the nature's way of lowering the energy of the system to attain stability. A chemical bond is formed either by transfer of electrons or sharing of electrons between two or more atoms. And usually the valence electrons are involved in bonding. Valence electrons means the electrons that are present in the outermost shell. Depending on how the electrons are shared or transferred between the atoms, there are three types of chemical bonds. Ionic bond, covalent bond and coordinate bond. First, let's see what is meant by an ionic bond. This type of bond is also known as electrovalent bond. And it is formed by the transfer of one or more electrons between atoms. In an ionic bond, strong electrostatic forces of attraction hold together the oppositely charged ions. Compounds like potassium chloride, calcium fluoride, sodium chloride, cesium chloride, etc. are formed by ionic bonds. Now let's see an animation on the formation of an ionic compound like sodium chloride. Now let's see how NaCl is formed from sodium and chlorine atom. The sodium atom has the atomic number 11. So it has the configuration 2, 8 and 1. That is one electron in its outermost shell. Whereas chlorine atom with its atomic number 17 has a configuration 2, 8 and 7. The chlorine atom has 7 electrons in its outermost shell. That means it is one electron short to complete the octet. So sodium atom will donate one of its electrons to the chlorine atom and form sodium ion that is Na plus and it will have configuration 2, 8 which is the configuration of the inert gas neon. Whereas the chlorine atom receives this electron and will complete its octet forming the chloride anion and configuration becomes 288 which is the configuration of another inert gas argon. So both Na plus and Cl minus have stable octet configurations and these two oppositely charged ions are held together by electrostatic forces of attraction to form the ionic compound sodium chloride. Now here you can see the representation using Lewis dot structures or Lewis structures. The dot represents the electrons in the outermost shell. Similar to sodium chloride, other compounds like calcium chloride and also magnesium chloride are also ionic compounds formed by the transfer of electrons from the calcium or magnesium to the chlorine atoms forming 
Ca2 plus or Mg2 plus ions and chloride ions. What are the factors favoring the formation of an ionic bond? If there is a large electronegativity difference between the two atoms, between the combining atoms, then it will favor the formation of an ionic bond. To be more specific, if the difference in the electronegativity between the two atoms is greater than 1.7, then the bond formed is predominantly ionic. There are also other factors which influence the formation of ionic bond. The electron donating atom must have a low ionization energy. Whereas the electron accepting atom should have a high value of electron affinity. And what is electron affinity? The tendency to attract the shared electron towards itself is known as electron affinity. So the electron accepting atom should have a high value of electron affinity. And finally, a large negative value of lattice energy of the compound. And what is lattice energy? It is the energy released when one mole of the ionic compound is formed from its constituent gaseous ions. So if the compound formed has a large negative value of lattice energy, then that will favor the formation of the ionic bond. So an ionic bond or electrovalent bond is formed between the atoms which has a large electronegativity difference and it refers to the electrostatic forces of attraction that hold together the oppositely charged ions which are formed by the transfer of one or more electron between the atoms. Next is the covalent bond. When a chemical bond is formed between two atoms, by sharing of an electron pair, then it is called a covalent bond. When a covalent bond is formed between two atoms, which do not differ much in their electronegativity. For example, consider the formation of fluorine molecule from two fluorine atoms. Fluorine atom has an atomic number 9. That means it has 7 valence electrons or 7 electrons in its outermost shell. So each fluorine atom has 7 valence electrons. Each fluorine atom is 1 electron short of the octet configuration. So these two fluorine atoms will combine by sharing an electron pair to form the fluorine molecule. So each fluorine contributes an electron towards the shared pair. Then we say that a covalent bond is formed between the two fluorine atoms. So this covalent bond completes the octet for both fluorine atoms and it forms a stable fluorine molecule. Now let's see an animation on the formation of covalent bond between two chlorine atoms to form a chlorine molecule. Depending on the number of electron pairs shared, there are different types of covalent bonds like single bond, double bond, triple bonds, etc. For example, in chlorine molecule, just one electron pair is shared and it forms a single bond, Cl, Cl, single bond. Whereas in the formation of oxygen molecule, each oxygen atom requires two electrons to complete the octet. That means two electron pairs are shared. So here you can see a double bond is formed because two electron pairs are shared. So oxygen molecule has a double bond. Now consider the formation of a nitrogen molecule. Nitrogen has only five electrons in its outermost shell. That means each nitrogen atom require three more electrons to complete the octet. So three electrons from each nitrogen atom is shared so that it forms a triple bond. 
while forming the nitrogen molecule. Let's see some more examples involving single, double and triple bonds. In ethane, the carbon-carbon bond is a single bond. We know that the valency of carbon is 4. There are 6 hydrogen atoms containing 1 electron each. These 6 hydrogen atoms will form bonds with the 2 carbons forming single bonds. So, 1 electron is left on each carbon. So, that 2 electrons are shared to form a carbon-carbon single bond which is a covalent bond. Whereas in ethylene there are only four hydrogen atoms. So these four hydrogen atoms form single bonds with the two carbons and you can see here that two electrons are left on each carbon. So these two electron pairs are shared to form a double bond in ethylene. And if you look at acetylene there are only two hydrogen atoms so, these two atoms are attached to each carbon. So, three electrons are left on the two carbon atoms which are shared to form a triple bond in acetylene. So, a covalent bond is formed between two or more atoms by sharing an electron pair. And this type of bond is formed between atoms which do not differ much in their electronegativity. And the last one is coordinate covalent bond. In this type of bond also, there occurs the sharing of an electron pair between two atoms. But here, both the electrons of the shared pair are contributed by only one of the atoms. Such type of bond is called a coordinate covalent bond. It is also known as simply coordinate bond or dative bond or donor acceptor bond. The coordinate bond is generally represented by an arrow mark starting from the donor and pointing towards the acceptor. A very good example for a coordinate bond is the ammonium ion. So consider the interaction between the ammonia and a proton. We know that ammonia that is NH3 is electron rich nitrogen has a lone pair of electron whereas a proton that is H plus is electron deficient this lone pair of electron is shared with this proton and it forms an ammonium ion that is NH4 plus so this arrow mark represents that it is a coordinate bond or coordinate covalent bond since both the electrons are shared or contributed by the nitrogen atom so when this lone pair of electron is shared with the proton, it can complete its duplet. Duplet means two electrons in its outermost shell. Or we can say that a coordinate bond is formed between ammonia and H plus to form ammonium ion NH4 plus. Another example for a coordinate bond that we can see in ammonia boron trifluoride addition compound. NH3 is electron rich whereas BF3 is an electron deficient species. Uh, so the sharing of electron pair on the nitrogen to the electron deficient boron atom can complete its octet and become stable. And another one you can see is the formation of AlCl4- from AlCl3 and Cl minus. Usually it exists as a dimer Al2 Cl6 as you can see here. Formation of hydronium ion H3O plus from H2O and H plus is also another example involving coordinate bond. So coordinate bond or coordinate covalent bond is a bond formed between two atoms by the sharing of electron pairs where both the electrons of the shared pair are contributed by one of the atoms. And the atom which contributes the two electrons is called the donor atom. And the one which participates in sharing the donated pair is called the acceptor atom. So we have seen what is meant by chemical bond. 
and the different types of chemical bonds like ionic bond, covalent bond and coordinate bond.